Elizabeth Fine Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering the art of animal art. In today's video, something a little different, not a tutorial this week, but I'm going to be going over paint and brushes. I'll talk about what brands of paint I use, what brands of brushes I use, and then I'll touch a little bit on just what the sizes mean and the uses for paint brushes. Okay? And then also next week I have an animal painting tutorial for stress relief planned for you, like always. And it's actually right behind me, this cow. It's an adorable abstract cow holding a sunflower. I absolutely love this one. It's so spring-like, so joyful and so silly and whimsical. So I know you'll love it. That's coming next week. And if you find this uh, video helpful, make sure you subscribe for more animal painting tutorials for stress relief and more tips and tricks for beginner through advanced artists. All right guys, thanks so much and let's get started. All right, the acrylic paint I buy is Windsor Newton. I buy the Master's Touch acrylic paint from Hobby Lobby. I buy Chocola paint and Liquidex Basics. I trust these brands for the coverage so I don't have to keep applying so many coats. I love the color. The pigment is rich and vibrant and it doesn't look dull and opaque. And I also like how at the very end of my painting when I cover it with a finish, the colors just look even better and then it lasts for a long time on, on the wall. So not only is it looking great, but it lasts a long time. And now for paint brushes. First, I'm gonna show you what brushes I use and love, and then I'm gonna show you what the sizes mean and their uses. So my favorite paint brushes that I use are the Benisi brand and Master's Touch brushes. You will never hear me talk or put down these two brands because they are just exceptional for brushes. Master's Touch is my absolute favorite. Benisi is my second favorite. Right now, I'm going to show you with the Benisi brand brushes what exactly each size is used for because I know it can be confusing. The sizes are, there's so many of them, which one should I use? And I will tell you, the sizes differ depending on the manufacturer. So unfortunately, the sizes that I'm showing you now won't be exactly the same as the one you're using. The number depends on the size and the width of the bristle. And so I'm using number one. This is called a rigor brush. This is so great because it's long and skinny. It allows me to create long whiskers or just really thin hairs. I really enjoy this one for doing whiskers because it bends with how I move my brush. I can create tiny dots with the tip of that brush. In my class, I refer to this as a detail brush. There is a few sizes that I'm going to show you that are detail brushes, meaning you do detail work with them. This is the number two brush of the Benisi brand. It's called a round brush. It's not flat, but it's pointed and more round at the top. I would also refer to this as a detail brush because it allows me to do tiny details on my painting. It's a bit thicker than the number one and it's great for creating lines. It's great for filling in eyes and nostrils. I really love using detail brushes this size. Next is number three, a fan brush. This is a thin fan looking brush that I don't use quite often. I like to paint close-up images and animals instead of landscapes, but whenever I paint landscapes, I use this a lot for grass and water. I You just need a thin amount of paint on it to create just this really textured look. You can use it at an angle to up and down to create really long, that's what I would that's what I did when I was creating grass for my Highland cow. I just uh, clustered these lines uh, together to create grass. All right, so I'm not gonna show you number four brush because it's so similar to what I showed you for size two. See size two on the right? They're almost identical, but size four is a bit thicker. So I'm gonna move on to size five, 
Also a round brush and a detail brush. I would still call this a detail brush because you can still make those fine details with. And you notice how as I go up a number, the bristles get thicker. So I can create thicker lines here. I can still get the point with the pointed end, but I really like doing this for thicker, clumpier hairs, maybe for a lab doodle. And by the way, these are synthetic brushes. They're not natural. I don't buy natural brushes because you have to kill the animal to get the bristles. So I'm not going to show you number six because it's just a little bit thicker than five and their uses are the same, just a little bit thicker. We're going to move on to number seven. This is a funny looking brush, isn't it? I don't use it hardly at all, but it's called a flat comb brush because it kind of has gaps in between that looks kind of like a comb. So uh, this is sort of like a fan brush to me. I feel like you can use it for similar things. It's just a bit shorter in width. Yeah, I don't use this very often. I think I've used it once. Next on to number eight of Benisi brand. This brush is called a filbert brush. It has a rounded top. It's not a round brush. It is kind of like a flat brush that's rounded at the top and it just allows you to get that rounded edge. You, the way I'm using my brush right now is a great way to kind of make circles or arches. I do this when I'm making feathers because the width of this brush is really great for making those long feathers with kind of a rounded end and great for filling in areas. I don't use this brush that often. I'd say I use a flat brush more than any other brush, but this is definitely handy. Next, we're moving on to number nine. See what I mean by I use flat brushes? I use this one a lot, and I just love the size. I love the width. I love that there are so many different things that I can do with this. I can make thick lines. I can create thin lines using the edge of my flat brush. I cluster a bunch of lines together to create strands of fur, to create all kind of different textures. Size 10 brush is also a flat brush and also one that I use a lot. It's very thin, so even more than the last one, I can create even thinner hairs, but it's a bit longer than the previous one. And so just angling my brush vertically on my canvas and just gliding it along, I can create those tiny thin hairs. I used to do this, use this brush to create whiskers until I found the rigger brush. So between this one and the rigger brush, you can use that to create whiskers. Number 11 brush is also a flat brush. I like to use this for painting backgrounds and to just to create a straight line. That point of the left and right sides of this brush can really come in handy when you're trying just to fill in a tiny area. This size brush holds paint well, so you don't have to keep dipping back into your paint. Brushes number 12 and 13 in the Benisi brand are angle brushes. When you use it at its side, so not directly vertical, but at its side, you can create a really sharp angle. It can even be a curved angle if you kind of curve it around. You can even use the longest point of that brush to get into small little tiny areas. Now I'm not gonna show you brush number 14, because it's so similar to the other flat brushes that I showed you. But I will show you the Filbert brush, number 15. A great brush for holding paint and painting backgrounds because it is so thick and long. I do this to create larger feathers, so for larger birds, and just to get those angles that I'm trying to get. It's great for painting a background around the animal that you just painted, so maybe you want to be careful about not painting over it. It's really great for getting around those edges. Now, something that a lot of brands don't provide are these micro detail brushes. So they're like half an inch, they're, they're smaller than number one or two, and this is so great for tiny, tiny details like little highlights in the eyes or little dots on the, nos on the nose. And this doesn't usually come in those paint packs that you buy, which is why you, you often have to buy it separate. I bought these brushes, their Masters Touch brand from Hobby Lobby. So now I'm going to show you a finishing brush. This is great for adding a finish or just filling over your canvas with a lot of paint. It holds a ton of paint. And this is also a Masters Touch brush. This did not come in my Benisi paint brush pack. 
If you really want to fine tune or develop skills using acrylic paint, I have an online animal art masterclass for creatives of all levels, beginner through advanced, and I've designed it to not only help you master animal art, but also to reduce stress. So if you're currently a creative battling anxiety, addiction, or depression, I've designed this class to help you slow down, focus on more uplifting things like ocean life or your household pets, birds, farm animals. Students get things like traceable printouts, reference photos, class notes, and I've set up the class so you can paint entirely at your own pace. So guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week in the cow tutorial. Have a blessed day. Bye.